Broward County Sheriff's Office policy for dealing with active shooter situations says first responders may go into a building to save lives without permission. The poly policy does not appear to mention anything about setting up a perimeter. If that's the case, then the question is, why did at least four Broward County Sheriff's deputies not rush into the school like the neighboring community Coral Gables officers did to save lives? Now, Fox News is also reporting that there were delays in allowing EMTs to go inside the school. Remember, we're talking about kids. These literally, these moments, precious seconds save lives. And we also know that there were dozens of missed warning signs prior to the shooting by the FBI and the Broward County Sheriff's Office. This is one huge, massive, big government bureaucratic failure at every level. The government failed the people of Florida. And as we have been telling you, Broward County Sheriff Scott Israel is refusing to accept even an ounce of responsibility. And he's also saying that he likely will not release video of how deputies responded so that we, you, the American people, can see exactly what happened. Shameful because a tragedy could have been prevented. All right, back to our top story. Joining us tonight, Fox News contributor Sarah Carter, Fox News contributor Jason Chavis, Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett. Greg, it's your night. This released letter by Devin Nunes tonight, to, when you are now questioning whether or not the FBI not only followed protocols, but whether they broke the law. And we will have an answer. He's demanding one in seven days. There is a set of guidelines. It's a book. It's really the Bible for the FBI. They have to memorize it. it. It says what they can and cannot do. On the one hand, when it comes to a criminal investigation, they cannot open it unless they have articulable, factual basis for it. They had none here, yet they opened the criminal probe of the Trump campaign. The second is, in a counterintelligence probe, uh, they have to submit evidence for a surveillance warrant that is corroborated and verified. Again, it's in the dialogue. These Don't guidelines. we know it was never verified? That's right. By the way, because in January, Jim Comey goes to Trump Tower and says, it's salacious and it's uh, not verified. And, look, and, you and this and is I, in October. This is months earlier. There, he's now admitting months later that it was never verified. That's right. And they used it. And using it is a violation of at least six different felony statutes. You noted some that Devin Nunes has pointed out, which are the ones you and I have been talking about, plus a couple of others he mentions there. But clearly abuse of power, I think perjury, uh, false and misleading statements, fraud, and conspiracy to commit fraud. So all of these are serious crimes punishable by five, ten years behind bars. And if you deceive a court and conceal evidence from a judge in order to spy on Americans, that is a whole set of crimes. This is going to come due now. This is happening. They are in deep trouble. All right, Congressman, let me go to you. Then I want to bring Sarah in. So we know that before the Nunes memo, where they waited till the very last day and hours before the deadline to release the information that then became the Nunes memo. We know that Rod Rosenstein went into Speaker Ryan's office and begged him, don't give the information that has been subpoenaed. Now I want to know, Rod Rosenstein, he has seven days to explain this. And I suspect he's not going to want to answer again. And he's the guy that appointed Mueller. How should this be handled from a legal standpoint when you have separation of powers, when you have oversight authority, as you once did. Yeah, no, look, Devin Nunes and uh, Trey Gowdy and the crew is doing exactly the right thing. Give them seven days, a very specific question, allow them to come up. I'm proud of the fact that Speaker Ryan is, is backing them and supporting. I would also encourage Devin Nunes to look at the security clearances of, of these people. Why do these people still have security clearances? You don't have a security clearance, you don't have a job. But these people, they are given great latitude, but the law and the guidance, as Greg pointed out, is very very clear and it looks as if it was clearly broken. One of the things, Sarah, I want you to weigh in on all of this, but also add the point that Ken Starr made uh, earlier, because this is an important point, and, and he was accused of the same thing, going beyond the mandate of what the special counsel is. I mean, literally every day I see and I believe, my gut, the special counsels, there's somebody in there that's leaking, because they don't like the fact that they're being covered 
and uncovered in the sense that look at the people that Robert Mueller hired. So when Ken Starr says it's beyond the mandate, how far beyond the mandate have we gone here? I think we've gone extremely far beyond the mandate. And remember, Ken Starr also argued that he was told by Janet Reno to go after those perjury charges against then President Clinton. So his mandate was expanded, he said, by the attorney general at that time. And I think that's important to note. So what we have to ask ourselves here is there's one specific question, and I just want to go back to Chairman Nunez's letter that says, what has the DOJ and the FBI done to bring these people to investigate them or to bring charges against them. We want to know what's going on here. And then if you go to the special counsel and you see the expansive nature of this special counsel and you now hear Adam Schiff is saying himself that, you know, basically he's saying there's no real evidence of collusion. It's all out there. Um, it's speculative. I mean, we may never know. It's out there. What is out there? <laughs> where, where, nobody can answer. Where is the collusion? What yeah, is it? There is no collusion as of yet. There has been no proof whatsoever These that people President have zero Trump's shame. campaign. They, they, listen, if he doesn't have that answer and he says, oh, it's already out there, what is it? Somebody needs yes. to ask him as he goes on 272 shows auditioning to be the next Rachel Maddow or, or Lawrence O'Donnell. Well, there's going to be charges. I mean, they're, they're, I believe right now Chairman Nunez, as well as Senator Grassley, are right over the target. You know, I keep hearing this over and over again. This is going to need to be investigated. There are going to be answers to these questions. I'm telling you, there will be answers to these questions. And remember, the Inspector General's report is coming out, Sean. When? And that is going to reveal a lot. And I think it's going to be very soon. It was supposed to be this month. Um, I'm hearing that it could still possibly be this month. They may extended right. into April, but we don't know yet. We need it sooner than later. Greg. Here is the problem. In order to bring these people to justice who appear to have committed a variety of crimes, you have to have the Department of Justice prosecutors uh, investigate and bring the case. Jeff Sessions Here's has shown Sessions no indication of doing this. He's going to say the, investor, uh, the inspector general's report comes out, then we get reports of possible crimes, then we ha hire, D then our DOJ lawyers will look at it, and then we'll have a special counsel. Yeah, they'll start really. Over. It's such a waste of Don't time. Don't we have enough evidence now that warrants an, an appointment of another special counsel to investigate the and, investigators, the FBI, and the DOJ? And Congress asked for it last. July and Jeff Sessions has been utterly feckless in in his responses. Jason Chaffetz, should there be a second special counsel and do we have to wait for the IG, then the DOJ attorney, and then maybe a special counsel? Is that when we know laws have been broken? We have irrefutable evidence at this point. Look, you have an attorney general who's recused himself out of the very job. I've been saved for a few months. It's time for, I'm sorry, Jeff Sessions is a good, honorable person, but he's not up to the job. He doesn't have the guts to get what needs to be done. He's recused himself out of everything. You don't need a special counsel if you have an attorney general who can actually, you know, make the, move the ball forward and do what he's supposed to do and administer justice, but he's nowhere on right. this. Don't so if you're not, if you're going to keep the attorney general in place, then go get a second special counsel. Jeff Sessions is not the attorney general. He's the AG in name only. It is being run by other people. Rod here, Rosenstein? Largely Rod Rosenstein. All right. Sessions is kept in the dark, out of major decisions. He doesn't have a clue as to what's going on there. And I get that from people in the DOJ. I do too. And so does yes. Sarah. Yeah. Sarah's shaking her head. I, I wish we had Absolutely. more time. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. All right, when we come back, Reince Priebus, also the great one, Mark Levin, will analyze all this new information. Stay with us uh, as this news-breaking edition of Hannity continues.